Welcome to Sector 8. This is the fifth map from Stardate 20X6. We're closing in on the heart of the alien base, a massive tower complex from which the signal we're pursuing originates. However, before we get there, we need to break through the industrial facility called Sector 8. The demonic presence is very strong here, and getting past this place is not gonna be easy. Sector 8 is a centralized gauntlet chock full of frantic encounters and dangerous set pieces. The exit is locked with a yellow key, and we need both red and blue keys to access it. The first two keys can be obtained in any order, but unlike in the previous level, there are no dedicated routes for them, as they're both directly tied to the central area. This is the point where Stardate stops messing around. Let's go. This level has a pretty difficult start. I mentioned in a previous video that there are three levels in 20x6 that have very obnoxious opening scenarios, and this is one of them. There's a pretty lengthy and dangerous sequence of events that we normally have to go through. Just like in a previous level, this is pretty fun when you're playing casually, but when you're trying to demo record, it just adds a lot of risk on top of everything. So we're just gonna skip it. So right now I'm just running past everything, waking up all the monsters, picking up items, pressing switches, and essentially my goal is to get to a bit more advantageous position. I'm deliberately not shooting to prevent the teleporting monsters from appearing. But it's almost time to wake everyone up. Okay, it's time to begin. In the previous levels there were always some boring moments where we basically had to wait for monsters to kill each other or we were doing something really slowly for the sake of minimizing the risk. Usually those moments would come later into the map, but uh, in this case we're gonna start with the boring segment. As usual, we want the Cyber Demon to do all the work for us. There's a large group of Arjvas that we've unleashed from behind the door early on, and these are the guys that I want out of the equation as quickly as possible. Unfortunately, in this demo, the Cyber Demon just refused to play along, went off somewhere and we have to wait for him. I think it's gonna be a while before he gets here. We really have no choice but to wait at this point, uh, even if we wanted to drop down, the, the entire path is blocked, so um, all we can do is wait. I think the Cyber Demon should appear soon. Oh, there he is. You probably have noticed that switch next to me. It opens a secret, and it's an interesting one because it's... Um, broken. Due to a design oversight, we can't actually get 100% secrets in this level legitimately. The HUD displays that there are 6 secrets in this level, but actually there are only 4, and I'm gonna explain why when we get to the first secret. Right, so now I see that the Cyber Demon has left the area again, so I decide to take care of this last Archvile by myself. This little hiding spot is actually not completely safe, so we have to be careful, because it's easy to get hit by something. And we need to expose ourselves to enemy fire to trigger infighting, so we cannot just sit there and do nothing. Ah, the Cyber Demon decided to show up. This is gonna speed things up. This entire level is pretty small, and we've actually already seen most of it. There's this large central hub area, and all the other points of interest are connected to it. Okay, now we have to take care of the Cyber Demon. As always in those situations, I, I know that this is not uh, terribly exciting to watch, but uh, this is really the most efficient and the safest way of dealing with this starting area. It was an opportunity to get rid of all those Archvals behind the door that would probably resurrect someone otherwise, and um, also the Cyber Demon took a lot of damage when infighting with other monsters. So this is the secret that I was talking about. Now, the design problem that I mentioned before is that there are actually, this is a single secret, there's just one room, but there are actually three separate sectors that are tagged as a secret. Of course, multiple sectors being tagged in a single secret area is not really that big of a deal, but the problem is that the third sector that is tagged, I think it's those purple cavities that we've seen, and um, because they are very thin and very deep, it makes it impossible to register them, so we're gonna leave this level with 5 out of 6 secrets. But we, we do find all the secret areas, so it's all fine. Now it's time to secure the main hub room. 
The first thing we have to do is to disable the security grid in this place. The hub room has multiple exit points. One of them leads to the spider den that we're gonna visit later. The other one leads to the finale. The third one that we're about to enter takes us to the control room where we can disable the security. Watch out for the chain gunners in the cage. Once the security is down, the pillar in the middle of a hub room will open, revealing two switches. The yellow one opens the exit. The red one unlocks the path towards the underground control center. If we're lucky, we might be able to take out the demonic leader in this sector. Here we press the switch and we have to deal with an ambush consisting of a pain elemental and a couple of chain gunners. Now we'll take the lift to the ledge with some supplies and then we'll proceed to secure the red key. The red key is in the vault that is currently under lockdown. In order to get to it, we're gonna have to open those large metal bars that we can see right now. This mega armor is pretty important, so we're gonna leave it for now. First, let's take care of those three revenants. There's a knowledge valve that will warp in the place of whichever revenant dies first, so we have to be careful. Okay, so right now we have to once again take the lift that we took at the very beginning of the level. You might remember a sizable room where we pressed two switches. We have actually skipped the fight over there, so we're gonna do it right now. So this is kinda sad, because I really like this fight. Uh, I'm kinda bitter about the fact that we had to skip it. When you do this fight normally, you're trapped on this platform and you have to fight two Archvites and two Hell Knights using that pillar as cover. Of course right now this fight is pretty trivial and I'm kinda sad that I didn't get to showcase it properly because it's pretty cool. It's another one of those easy but really satisfying encounters. Anyway, the reason why we're here is because from here we can get on top of the platform that has a switch which opens the vault containing the red key. The battle for the red key is straightforward but actually pretty fun. We're gonna have to disable a few layers of security, unleashing new monsters each time. And here's the platform with a pretty nasty ambush. If you don't know about this, you might take a lot of damage. Here's the vault. And just like that one room in the first level, it has a pretty fancy floor. And that's the first switch. Nothing too difficult here, only two revenants, but that's just a taste of things to come. The second group is a bit more dangerous. You can fire exactly seven rockets and then you have to reposition yourself. And preferably do not get hit like this. Now just clean up the rest of the enemies and prepare for stage three. This one is gonna unleash barons on one side and pain elementals on the other. We have to quickly take care of the pain elementals and then focus on barons. I'm gonna try to kill the barons away from where the red key is. The final switch releases two Ardvas into this area, so it's better if they can't revive the barons right away. So in the meantime, as I'm fighting those barons, let's take a moment to appreciate how pretty this floor looks. <laughs> I don't know, it just, it just looks really fancy and interesting. I like stuff like that. Some people might say it's over detailed, but you know, whatever, I like it. Here's the final switch. Let's take care of the Archvals and grab the red key. There's actually going to be another Archval that will teleport in at the entrance when we pick up the red key. So I pre-fire a couple of rockets to take care of him. And here we have another secret. We've seen this sorcerer from the outside, through the window. We have to shoot that button to unlock it, but we're gonna leave it for now. Right now we should probably look for some medikits. The next fight can be quite nasty. Okay, so we drop down and we're immediately greeted by four Mancubi. Now, 
this is not very difficult, but uh, you have to use the pillar, one of the pillars, uh, as cover, otherwise you're gonna get shot from behind. This is the control room, which has been taken over by a demon leader in this area. So while we're here, we're gonna take care of it. Let's grab all the rockets and prepare for a pretty nasty fight. When we press the switch, two corridors full of Hell Knights and Barons are going to open. Meanwhile, a mastermind is going to start spraying bullets from the middle section. The best thing that we can do here is to focus on one of the groups and um, once we exhaust their numbers, we should take cover in their monster closet. With any luck, the mastermind should start infighting with the rest of the demons, so this should take some of the attention away from us. Right, so, near the exit of this area, there is uh, a secret teleporter that lets us telefrag the mastermind. However, as you're gonna see in a couple of seconds, uh, I'm gonna start shooting the mastermind with a double bear shotgun. So you might be asking yourself, well, why, why am I doing this? Why not use the teleporter? Well, I'm gonna tell you why not use the teleporter. Because the telefragon is kind of broken and there's a good chance you're gonna teleport next to the mastermind. It actually happened to me once and I lost a run because of this. And this is something that I don't really appreciate. Uh, we've seen something similar in map 27 of Sunlust, where there was a mastermind that you could telefrag, but the telefragging did not work 100% of the time. I think the issue comes from the size of the mastermind hitbox, but if it's so unreliable, then you probably shouldn't be doing this. Alright, so, the teleporter out of this area is gonna take us to the switch that will lower the pillar with a yellow key. The yellow key area itself requires a blue key which we don't have yet, so this is our next objective. The battle for the blue key is kind of the signature encounter in this map. It's pretty damn difficult and it's probably the toughest fight in the entire level next to the finale. I know that a lot of people have problems with it, so I'm gonna show you how to do it properly. This is probably the biggest mistake in this whole run. That area, we could have accessed it earlier and killed some stuff. However, we didn't do that, so now we have the combined forces of enemies that are normally in this room and enemies that appear after we lower the pillar. It's just a giant mess. The biggest problem is that we really don't have any other access to this room. This is the only way, so we just basically have to wait until the Archvile dies and then we can finish off the rest of the enemies. I'm actually not sure why I did this. Um, after I got the red key, I just immediately rushed towards the spider den. I mean... From the perspective of how much it actually hurts us, it really doesn't, because we have a pretty safe position here, but the problem is that I couldn't rush the Archval, so we just have to wait until it all calms down. By the way, the finale of this level is one of the most difficult fights in those first five levels of Stardate. Probably even the most difficult. And it's always scary, because you have to beat the entire level first before you even get to attempt that fight. Oh, finally done with this. Let's grab all the stuff and move on. Now we see a plasma rifle locked behind purple lasers. And of course, it's guarded by an arch file. There are a bunch of revenants on a ledge around the corner. If you have picked up the plasma rifle, then an arch file is gonna warp in onto that ledge, so... It's better to wait with killing them until you disable the lasers. You see, there he is. Oh, that was a nice hit. 5% health, just like I like it. So over there we can see the door leading to the blue key section. However, there's no way I'm attempting that fight with that amount of health. As always, let's spend some time looking for medikits and stuff. I will also be grabbing one of the soul spheres that I've left behind, but uh, I'm actually gonna go there without armor. Now, to anyone who has ever played this level, this may seem a little crazy, like why wouldn't I take the armor, right? Well, there's two reasons for this. The first reason is that I really want to save the mega armor for the finale, that's where I really need it. And there's a mega sphere there, but, uh, you know, it's nice to have a mega sphere as a last resort in case something goes wrong. But I found out that the upcoming fight is actually not as insanely difficult as some people might think. I, I thought it was incredibly difficult, but I found a way to actually do this fairly reliably. 
In fact, um, it's a pity I don't have that demo anymore, but one time, once or twice, I've actually managed to survive it without taking damage at all, like losing maybe 5 or 10 percent health, so it's absolutely possible to do this, so I'm not really as afraid of this fight as I used to be. Okay, so this fight takes place in a T-shaped room. We're on a balcony of sorts, and once we press the switch, we get three hordes of cacodemons coming from all sides, and there's absolutely no cover there. So here's what you have to do. Stand as close to the door as possible and fire rockets at the swarm that's right in front of you. This prevents the other two groups from immediately attacking you, but you're gonna have to get out of cover eventually. The way that this fight is designed is that there are three rows of cacodemons on each side, and because we don't have the vertical auto aim, we can only immediately hit the lowest row. So this prevents you from killing all the cacodemons on one side and then moving on to the other. Like, they will converge in your position eventually. So as always, stay calm, keep your focus, try to keep all the hordes roughly at the same distance from you, though I gotta say it's legitimately hard to do this because uh, it's very easy to run out of space. It's kind of like that cyberdemon fight uh, in the previous level. One minute it looks fine and then you turn around and you're surrounded. See, there's just one cacodemon left now. At this point, we have already won. But, as you have probably already guessed, this is not over yet. And I mean, even if you haven't seen this fight before, I guess you can pretty much guess what's gonna happen. Now we're gonna have to deal with pain elementals. However, this is actually pretty easy. Once again, stay at the door and do not shoot anything unless something gets really close to you. All you really have to do here is to wait until the exit switch appears. Uh, just do not provoke the pain elementals on the sides and you'll be fine. See, there it is, and uh, now we can escape. Bam, out of the woods already. So at this point we can just take our time, there's no reason to rush it anymore. Alright, so as I'm wrapping things up here, let's talk about our next objective. We have already lowered the pillar with the yellow key, and now that we have a blue key, we can enter the area where the yellow key is, so obviously we're going there next. There's nothing particularly dangerous about that, there's a couple of vials and barons, but that's, uh, that's not a problem. After that, we're gonna go back to the starting area, because remember we've left some Hell Knights and I think a Mancubus or two Mancubi there, so we have to finish them off before we move on. After that is done, we're gonna go to... Probably the weirdest part of the level, which is an optional room locked with a blue key. We've actually already seen it, it's right next to the platform which has a switch that opened the red key vault. When we get there, I'm gonna explain to you why this room is so weird to me, I really do not understand what the purpose of this place is. Okay, let's head towards the room with the yellow key. First up, we have two barons. Now, these guys are not really dangerous, but I'm gonna try to lure them out, because we're gonna have two Archvals coming out after them, so I want them to die somewhere where the Archvals are not likely to resurrect them. The Archvals appear after we pick up the yellow key, but there's also a pain elemental there in the corner. Yep. As always, just block him with a chain gun, push him against the wall so that all the lost souls that appear after he's dead just explode immediately. And there we have the vials. Nothing difficult here. Okay, good. Now let's grab everything. I'm actually leaving this soul sphere for later, but actually it's completely pointless. I, I don't know why I'm doing this. I guess I'm not thinking straight at this point. Yeah, I'm just playing around here, waiting for the infighting for some reason. Probably would have been quicker if I just killed them all by myself. Do you know, I feel like I've made this level look way easier than it actually is. I mean, in Tanagra there were a couple of close calls, and in Foxhall I just kept almost dying over and over, but here it went rather well. But yeah, don't be deceived, this level is way harder than it actually looks. It took me many attempts to get this demo. I mean, the Kakademon room will probably keep you busy for a while, and not even talking about the finale. Okay, let's go to the blue key room. 
So as far as I can say, this area is completely optional and there's not even anything good in there, so I don't know. And yeah, this area would have been actually pretty damn difficult if it wasn't for a little secret they were about to unlock. So yeah, this switch lowers the invulnerability that we've seen before and with it, this entire fight is just a joke. Okay, here's the most epic battle in Stardate. Just stand still and do absolutely nothing. Yeah, so there's that. We, we're just waiting for the for the exit switch to appear, and we just run out and kill everything. <laughs> that's it. That, that's the room. It's, it's really strange. I don't know. I mean, of course, without the invulnerability, it would be really difficult. But I mean, I don't know. That's I don't understand this room. So now that we've escaped, we can just once again take our time. Just slowly, patiently kill everything. There's no reason to rush. Yeah, so that was pretty easy, to say the least. But we still have the worst fight in the whole level to do, the finale. So I'm gonna have to prepare for it. First I'm gonna grab the secret soul sphere, because we haven't actually triggered that secret yet, uh, and then take the mega armor. At this point I noticed that I only have 4 out of 6 secrets. Now I've already explained that we can only get 5, but I got all of them, so I'm like, I'm, I'm a bit confused there, but then I realized that uh, maybe, maybe it was the, the pillar with the secret invulnerability orb. I accidentally didn't register it. Oh yeah, check out those cool platforms. They're completely black when viewed from the side, and you can only see the top. Man, this place is really scary. It really is. So the setup here is that we press the switch, and then a gigantic horde of revenants starts just spilling out of the gate. There's way too many, so we really have to fight for the space, or we're just gonna die. Let's go. So the first thing we want to do is to go to this corner because we want to lure the revenants out of their monster closet. Because there are so many, we have to stay here for a couple of seconds and then move to the other side. This is the critical moment. We're gonna have to switch to the plasma rifle and then try to break inside the revenant room. The switch inside is gonna release a cyber demon and in this case it's gonna help us a lot. The timing here is extremely precise. If we try to go too fast, then not enough revenants will have left their monster closet. On the other hand, if we try to wait for too long, then the revenants will just swarm us and we won't be able to escape. That switch opens the exit. If things are too bad, you may just make a run for it and leave everything behind. Okay, things are looking a bit better now, but it's still not over yet. You see that it's still very easy to get stuck here, so let's stay focused. Yeah, it's just a giant mess. Everything really depends on the first 30 seconds. If you can lure the revenants out, flip the switch inside their monster closet and then escape, then you're pretty much on the right track. Now, in this demo it looked pretty manageable, but trust me, this is way harder than it looks. If you mess up the timing when going for the switch, then it's pretty much over, there's no way out for you. <laughs> Imagine getting up to this point, playing for 20 minutes and then dying here, it's really heartbreaking. Um, actually it's still nothing. Just wait for the final level of 20x6. Oh boy, I'm gonna make sure you understand what a nightmare it was to record that level. Alright, so that's pretty much it. Just a couple of monsters left and we're done. Phew! Okay, so it's time to get to the last two levels of 20x6, and I have a lot of things to say about them. I'll walk you through all the pain and suffering I had to endure to beat those levels. So look forward to that, because it's gonna be fun.